Okay, water pool. Let's fly through some prices and some history. Um, basically, this is a graph that, that maps out the last number of years. What have we got? Seven years there in the start of this year. That's uh, July and August. And the slide Andrew put up earlier shows, shows increases into September on, on that current price. Historically, water prices followed a bell curve. But there seems to be maturity in the market that's taken that bell curve out where people are understanding that they can buy water at the end of the season or at the start of the season, usually a little bit cheaper um, than what they can in the middle of the season in this space. And, that, and consequently, in the last few years, we've seen a flattening of that bell curve. So particularly, you know, you get a wet year down here, um, it's pretty flat right through. But even, even in the higher priced years, and this is a pretty typical year, this is, uh, what's that one, 16, 17? And that's when we started off nice and high, we got a whole bunch of rain, and bang, down came the price. And that's, that's an incredible fall from $240 odd dollars down to under 50. Um, but there's certainly pressure in the market at the moment around price. Um, Andrew touched on the Inner Valley trade. There's a, there's a disparity now between Goulburn prices and Murray prices. Average of about uh, $20 a megalitre difference um, from getting it from, from Goulburn water to, to Murray. Any questions along the way, let's um, fire them out as we go. I think it'd be good. So what are the drivers? Seasonal conditions. I mean, that's teaching grandma how to suck eggs. But seasonal conditions have a 99.9% .9 effect on the drive around price. We talk about a lot of other factors, and there are other factors. Allocation volume. Allocation volume is a result of seasonal conditions. Source and costs of alternatives to, waters, to water. And we talk, we've just been through the hay grain exercise. And in certain industries, there's cutoff points where on-farm production turns into imported feeds. Again, those alternatives are driven by seasonal conditions. Industry competition, perhaps not so much seasonal conditions, but can be somewhat depending on where uh, water rainfall finds itself and what catchments are alive and what, what ones aren't, but certainly industry competition. How much can an industry afford to pay for a megalitre of water before it becomes uneconomic? And if you look at, you know, the tree growers around Sunraysia, obviously their margins are a lot higher than a cropping person or a dairy person, so obviously they can drive the market up when things are a little bit scarcer. Commodity prices obviously will have effect as well. But commodity prices again are driven by seasonal conditions. We keep coming back to that common denominator of, 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 of what drives price. Water ownership, there's a lot of talk in the industry that more and more water is going into the hands of non-irrigators. Um, and that is the case to some degree, um, but it's not as dramatic as we might think it is the, the investment space in the water industry is probably no more than 5% of total volume. That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a gut feel guess, having understand that there's probably five major players in that space. And those guys, in su to some effect, yes, can have, an, can have an effect on price. They can influence the price and, and the price they put their products into the market at. But again, it's a very, very small percentage of available water. So their ability to, to influence a market to any great extent uh, is not that high. Having said that, these guys too are buying up entitlement and they're still buying entitlement. But they can't, they can't isolate that water from the market. Trading rules don't prevent them, don't allow them to take the water away from the market, store it up, and make a hit down the track. They can't, generally can't carry it over from season to season, or there's only certain limits they can do in that space. For, so for them to make any money for their investors, the water's actually got to hit the ground as irrigation water somewhere. And the price of uh, high reliability water share can, can certainly drive the market to some degree and the, and the availability of certain products. 
For instance, the lease product is, is based on the price of high reliability water share. Right, generally 6% of the market, and let's say at the moment we're talking $3,200 odd dollars for Goulburn water dry, round about that price, you're talking around about the $200 lease price. And lease has been a good option for a lot of our customers this year to secure water. The problem is when we've got a $330 allocation market, the lease product's not going to be made available at $200. It's going to go into the market as allocation. So the lease stuff dries up. So that, that can be a bit of a driver. But again, all the factors below that top one, it all comes back to seasonal conditions. Outlook. Seriously, we don't know. Again, we go back, to, I keep using the word seasonal conditions, but, but we go back to that again. And that's what the drivers are of the outlook. Waterpool have a policy of not predicting or naming a water price. And people will say, why? Why? Because we don't want to be seen to be driving the market. We want the market to drive the market. Right? If we start influencing price or we suggest a price, that has an influence on the market. So if I, I mentioned a price today and Andrew and Rodney are here, it's in the newspaper next week and all of a sudden that's where the water price is. There was, there was a broker three years ago decided that allocation price, at the start of that season where the price tumbled down to 50 bucks, there was a broker years ago suggested water's going to reach $600 this year. The next week we had three seller offers in the pool for $600. So let the market drive, let, let the, market drive the price the same as it does to some degree around hay and grain. It's the only fair way and transparent way that we can trade to help you guys through what can be sometimes tough times. Alternative products, so touched on that slightly. Um, lease, forward allocation, carryover, protection. The lease, as I said, is, is usually driven around the, the um, permanent market. And if we did a trade in Sunraysia yesterday in the, in the Murray, for $4,600 with current allocation. With current allocation, so the 70 odd percent of allocation that's available to them. Now that's crazy stuff. You multiply that by 6% and lease becomes quite expensive. So that was Murray water? That was Murray water. Zone 7 Murray, specifically. Zone 6 Murray is a fair way behind that, uh, and Goulburn's behind that again. What percentage of, or what sort of numbers of people do you have using lease, leasing? Or? It's growing all the time. Um, we're doing a lot of leasing on behalf of the investors, but we're also doing a lot of leasing on behalf of private water owners. So uh, retired farmers that have, might have water in the super fund or might just have water that they've been utilising in terms of allocation, and that's a little bit of income from each year. A lot of those guys now have decided that lease is a nice solid option for them and that's been working really well for us so you know at any given time we could have at the moment we've probably got 40 odd thousand megs leased yeah. something like that and that's use of uh, like it goes to the market as a lease option yeah. so generally we've got a list of inquiries around lease um, we don't actually put it, it doesn't go up on a bulletin board. Um, we've got a list of guys that are interested in it and if at a price and if, it, if we, can, we can source it, we do. Um, but it's, it's a good alternative. Um, I mean, obviously, lease, is, lease has the same characteristics as ownership. So you're at the behest of allocation. You're still going to pay your, pay your full, lease, full lease, but um, yeah, you do take a part. Um, and interesting that you know we've got a fair few leases away this year in that $200 space. Um, well, they've done extremely well this year, but then if you come back to the average price of water being about $130 historically, yeah, it's it's a there's yings and yangs as well. So, so they're paying costs on top of that. But yeah, so storage fees. It, it's the same as I say, the same characteristics of ownership. So okay. storage fees are on top of that. Uh, so, so delivery, okay. delivery costs which come, whichever, however you source your water, that's all part of it too. Yeah. 
What's the average lease term? Three. Three, three years. Um, some guys are going out to five, but, but generally three. It's usually um, attached to a CPI increase as well. Um, and generally we've been trying to negotiate where we can the leases on terms. So four payments usually, and we usually try and strive to get the water at a, at a practical time. So, so on, on most cases, water pool will take a bulk lease and then share that amongst our members. And we, and we strive for, for August, uh, October, December and February payments and deliveries on that lease stuff if it's available via the allocation. Ford allocation has been a crazy market this year. There's been all sorts of prices quoted. Um, we got it uh, 2,000 megs off a bulk entitlement holder last year for this year's Ford at $135. And at the time that we, we signed up, those guys were thinking, oh, it's pretty pricey. And they're loving it now. But that's, occasionally you have a win, occasionally you don't. Um, carryover protection has been really, really vital. We've, um, we do a lot of brokering of putting, we call it cars and garages, so um, hiring garage space and charging cars to park in there. And that's, that's matched, it's helped match a lot of entitlement and, and fill a lot of carryover space, which has probably, Andrew, restricted your ability a bit to make allocations against low, but it's still water that's available for consumptive use one way or the other. So that's a practical solution to, to help with your forward planning. Um, yeah, I haven't got much else really. Um, where the price is going to be, you guys are going to decide that. Um, obviously, as seasonal conditions go on. What we have noticed in the last couple of years, and that two years ago when prices started to get a bit crazy, it, it kind of hit that 320 mark and everyone just backed out because I think people now have got a better understanding of what value a megalitre of water has for their enterprise. So the market's matured in that sense. I don't, I don't think we'll ever see the $1,000 a meg again that we saw in 2007. Don't think we're ever going to see the $5 a meg we, we saw in 2012. So the market's, market's crunched down into that more mature space um, because of that understanding of what the value of on-farm use is. So albeit dry at some point, at some stage there's a tip over point where it just doesn't go any further. And you'll find in that kind of year, historically, you'll get bumps. So it'll get to a price, the buyers will slow down, sellers will come back, it'll come back a bit, the buyers get active. So it's a bit like that. It's probably a quicker than 20 minutes, I hope, Rob. Uh, the difference in price between Goulburn and Murray yep. is because of physical constraints. Yep. Get the water there. Any talk of changing those physical constraints? Um, there's been t well, there's there's a there's a couple of issues there. There's no real talk of changing that base two hundred thousand gig, but I'm not sure what's in the mind of of the guys down south um, at the department. But there's what, what has also happened, and, and it kind of exacerbates it, but it also helps pe get people out of trouble, is the tagged ABA situation. So you can actually have a one ABA for use in the Murray zones, right? So, and you'd attach that ABA to your water use licence in the Murray zones. So any water that gets put onto those tagged ABAs also adds to that in the Valley Trade limit. And there's a lot of people woken up to that to that ability, and that's, it's in the trading rules, and, and why shouldn't they do it? Um, we note that if you're in Sunraysia, that Lower Murray Water refused to process them. So, um, they won't do it, so there's not so many of them where Lower Murray Water, which cuts off at about Tresco upwards, becomes Lower Murray Water's responsibility. They, they just flat out refuse to process them. But, uh, but it is an opportunity for some people in Victoria to access cheaper water, but there's, there's problems with them too. You have to, have to use the water basically because you can't carry over against it because it's not protected by entitlement in that ABA.
Okay, so it's got to either got to be used or sold at the end of the season. I think you are just tagged, but tagged water is, is under review to develop the numbers. Yeah, there's talk about it. I'm not sure how serious it is. Um, we won't know until they come out with some sort of discussion paper around it. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, yeah, I, I think it probably, in fairness to everybody, the more this happens, the more pressure it puts on that on that trade crap. Trade crap? <laughs> Cap, I think I meant to say. <laughs> I think I got back to that shite word before. <laughs> so, yeah, um, it does put more pressure on that on the cap with those tagged ABAs. So somewhere something's got to give you would think. And and while it while it caps in place, we've got a disparity in price across the three major zones as well. We saw it a little bit last year when the trade opportunities for the gold was the Murray opened up at the, the prices. Yeah, it, it, it did. It was interesting. It, and it literally went like that. It just it was for here and then went and probably Erred to the golden side, to the to the lower price. But I would hope, Andrew, under normal conditions, the biggest driver for getting that cap open is is, is water use, irrigation. Um, given that we've had such an early start to irrigation, you'd be would you think there'd be more positive signs that cap would open earlier than than it did in previous seasons? Yeah. So it's the last year we made it until March. Yeah, that's right. Um, that was because we had such a high balance and use from those tag accounts, put a lot more water into your account. Yep. So around, around 300 gig or whatever. Yeah, well, 65 megs added to the capping just carryover, wasn't there? That's right. Yeah. 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 Last year. Yeah. 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 So, um, so what we also initiated was actually called out about 40 gigs already yep. from that account. Yep. Because of the dry conditions. We didn't start pulling water out last year until January. That's right. Yeah. So, yeah, and it was only 32 odd, th 32 thousand megs carried over this year in carryover. So it's half the amount of carryover was added to the cap this year. Yeah, so we carried over about 170 gigs in the account. Yeah, righto. So there was, but, but then by, by the start of the season, it was still was already part of the goal Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Okay. Oh, there's an agreement. You said Wales can use the farmer, the Mohalla Murray Irrigation yeah. Yeah, Channel to bypass the Murray Channel. What, what impact does that have on price here, Benny? It's, New South Wales is a real funny one. I, I don't quite get it, but you know, I don't think the New South Wales guy, guys wake up to the fact that they can actually buy water in Victoria and shift it over there. I um, mean, historically, Victoria is a, a net importer of water. Um, by a substantial number of megalitres in most seasons. Um, there's a unique opportunity probably for some of those New South Wales guys to pick up some water this year, but then again, prices might be prohibitive based on the crops, crop types. You know, rice drops out pretty early in the food chain in terms of water prices. Um, so not quite sure what, I don't quite get it. There a, there's a, seems to be a barrier in the thinking of New South Wales guys in, in attacking our markets. Perhaps we shouldn't wake them up. But the, 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 the general flow of orders from the other way. Um, the delivery, the switch around the choke just at the moment is going to make very little difference given what they've got up there, zero allocation and their ability to trade is, is minuscule and not likely to improve much unless Murrumbidgee opens up and stuff sh starts shifting around there, opens up seriously, but can't see that happening either, to be honest. There's usually pretty, the prices usually line up pretty much pretty close to some degree.